Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Michaels Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August uh, 12th, 2019. I am WX0MIK and my name is Mike Wills. This season we are covering amateur or if you prefer ham radio. So today we are talking about section 5.4 in the ARRL Technician License Manual. Link in the show notes as always. And today we are talking about probably one of the most important things about any radio that you might might ever run. And that is power. Um, so handhelds are generally battery powered. Uh, some of them have the option to do um, like a AAA or, or not a double A type style where you can plug in, I don't know, six or so batteries in it and power it through double A batteries. Great for extremely emergency traffic. Otherwise, they usually have some sort of a built in battery. Works pretty good overall. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say works pretty good. That works great normally unless you have no way to charge it up again. My Bofang, my Bofang um, radios have um, what they call long-range battery pack or extended battery pack, whatever it, uh, whatever the proper term is. It's a bigger battery pack. Uh, they actually have in the side a plug for it um, that you can plug it directly into the wall or, more importantly, you can plug into, well... Any kind of USB port, any uh, any USB charger. So that's really kind of neat that way. But the book doesn't talk about Bofang radio. So let's uh, continue on here. Um, most of your radios are going to require some sort of 12-volt power source. It doesn't matter if it's your big HF radio or if it's your little handheld. Uh, your little handhelds may vary... But in general, it seems like most, from what I have seen anyway, most things are universal 12 volt power supply. And actually, it's not technically 12 volt, even though that's what everyone calls it. It's actually technically 13.8 volts is what gets delivered. And that is coming from your battery in your vehicle and so on. So. In the book, they're trying to say when you say 12 volt, and I'm putting that in the quotes, air quotes, it's actually 13.8 volts, but universally they just call it 12 volt. When you're shopping for a power supply, that is an important thing to make sure that you understand what your radio needs and what the power supply delivers. So I'm jumping around here tonight, sorry, a little bit, but. Um, they talk about two main sources of power within the book. The first one is a power supply. Well, what is a, uh, and then the other is a battery. So what is a power supply? Um, well, for those of you who work on computers, you know what power supply is in a computer. It's some, the, the part that you physically plug into the wall through a power cord, and then it supplies power to the internal components within the computer. Is usually some amount of some sort of a transformer to reduce it down to a DC voltage. I don't remember what computers do. I think it's mixed voltages, and then um, it can it can handle up to X number of watts of power. Um, very similar thing for uh, power supplies designed for radios. Um, 
again, they convert the power from 120 volts to 13.8 volts. Um, a lot of them are regulated power supplies to help with uh, voltage, to minimize your voltage changes. Because in radio, you want very consistent power of that 13.8 volts. So it's always in that same mode. So they added extra circuitry in there to help minimize the drop of voltage due to 120 variations and so on. The other thing that they really stress in here is before you buy one, make sure you understand what it is you need for power requirements. If you are using a big, if you're planning on using it with a big HF radio at full power, let's just say 100 watts, you may require up to 30 watt power supply. But if you're only ever going to power a little, I don't know. I'll, I'll call it a mobile. I'm not even sure what the power requirements on those, but let's just say it's 15 watts. You know, make sure you get something that can handle that. You know, I would always plan for bigger, but you never know. They're just boxes you plug in. They supply power. Um, a, one of the more modern power uh, connections that they have now. Uh, crap, I forgot what it's called. One one term for it is power pole. The Anderson plug or something like that, I think it's called. Personally, that's what I would be getting uh, if I was when I'm get when I get one for my house. That's probably what I'll get. Um, before they actually start talking about batteries, they talk about one other uh, part in here, and this is mobile power wiring. Basically, wiring of your vehicle. They, t they go through a few tips. Um, one of them is to make sure that when you hook up your radio, it's best to, to hook it up straight up to the battery and then make sure that you fuse both wires. And that is A, to minimize fire risks and so on of what a fuse is designed to do. You know, they're talking about make, making sure you use grommets to make sure that you don't, wires don't rub. Various little things like that. Um, so the only other thing uh, that they really stress with uh, wiring within a car, though they don't really talk about how to fix it, is the alternator wine. So you, you may hear on receiving, but more than likely you'll be that your um, people you're transmitting to will hear it, and that is the pit the high pitched whine of your alternator spinning up. There's a lot of RF noise within your your your, your uh, vehicle, and so I thought I remember seeing somewhere how to handle that. I can't remember where I seen that. Uh, so if it's not done, covered in the book directly, there are other places or internet searches to find out how to minimize extra RF noise coming from the vehicle itself. Um, then they go into batteries. And they start talking about multiple different time kinds, all the way from your standard AAA, all the way up to 9 volt, coin cells, battery packs, and then they call them storage batteries. And that is really your big, um, like the batteries in your car or what you might use for your trolling motor, boat, something like that. And specifically, when you start talking the big radios, I've seen several references to people using um, in the emergency power situations, what they call that. They use like a deep, deep cycle uh, or a marine battery um, because those are good to discharge quite a ways down, recharge back up, and they're used to this cycle of withdrawal and recharge. Where your car vehicle, and this is not in, or it might have been in the book, but I don't remember reading in the book. Your car battery is really designed to kind of stay at that 100% charge or even 80% charge. And really should not drop below that because that can lead to issues with that, that, that type of battery. Where your deep cycle is used to this, and I know you can't see my hand, but I'm doing a big old <laughs> wave of charging up and discharging. There are all, also people who have used 
uh, batteries, and I don't remember the exact type, but I want to say um, gel something. Um, they're smaller batteries and typically used in more of a situation like your... Um, Oh, come on, brain. It's 10 30. No, it's 11 o'clock at night, so my brain's not working. Um, battery backup um, stuff, th- th- computer battery, UPS. That's the word I'm looking for. So, like your UPSs and, and at your business, batteries like that also work pretty well. Obviously, they don't hold as much power, but um, even talking to the guy at work is like, you know, if you can. In a normal daily or normal usage, if you are able to utilize even a battery that they pull out that still has some life but not enough for the business environment, you know, you can get some, probably at least some decent amount of time off of a radio running off of that. So, you know, I, I might try that here at some point and see if I can't grab one of those old batteries and just uh, see how long a radio will work off of that. It's worth an experiment, at least, especially if you can get those for next to nothing versus a deep cycle battery, which is going to cost you, uh, let's just say around 200 bucks, probably a little bit less, but they're pretty spendy, and that depends on the exact type of battery you get. Another power source that really wasn't mentioned, but I know I've heard many, many people talk about it, is um, solar power. So you can get a 12-volt solar power source, and you can power your your um, your radio off of that. However, what I have heard, and I believe what they do, is they don't supply power directly from the solar solar. Um, right into the radio. They put it into the battery and then the battery delivers the power to the radio. That way you, you get the con- a constant power source rather than with solar ray kind of cyclical. No, not really cyclical, but they, they, they aren't always con- providing a, a, a constant rate at all times. I remember reading that somewhere as well. So um, I know I said I was going to try and put the net from the night, the net from tonight. I can't talk. I don't know what's going on. Today. I'm just weird, apparently. So I know I mentioned that I was going to have you uh, include the net from tonight into this episode. However, I'm just l- looking ahead. We're talking about nets on Friday. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off and put that into Fridays. That way you can hear what the FM analog radio sounds like at that time. Plus it's it's uh, it's based on the subject of net, so you, we can talk about what is a net on top of that. So hopefully two birds, one stone with that one. So um, I'm going to wrap it up here and it's, I'm before I keep on rambling and uh, it's 11 to 15 at night, so <laughs> I'm going crazy, I think. So, um, You can find me on Twitter and Facebook. Just look for Mike Wills. You can email me at Mike Wills at Mike at Mike Wills dot me. My website where you can find the show notes um, tonight. Trust me, they're a little better than what I'm talking about right now is um, Mike Wills dot me. And until tomorrow, thank you so much for listening, even to this craziness. And uh, 73, this is WX0MIK. And I do believe we talk about what 73 is here in the next uh, couple days. The frequency is now clear. The frequency is clear. WX0MIK. 73.